Yeah. No? Okay. Hi, my name is Simona and I'm your favorite progressive Russian internet auntie or friend or mom, whatever you need right now. I got you. I've been requested to talk about places that I've visited and uh, that I lived in and uh, talk about the pros and cons about living in those places. Now that I'm stuck at home in quarantine for quite a while, it's about time I do the things I'm supposed to do and film the damn series. And I was lucky enough to live in quite a few countries in my life, so I will be talking about them in these series. I hope it's gonna be interesting and uh, educational for you. See? Made notes. Very nice. Very prepared. A quick disclaimer. In this series, I share my personal experience about living in different places, so it's gonna be subjective. The things I say are not meant to describe and define a whole country or city. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about Latvia, specifically Riga, I guess, because it's where I'm from. I wanted to start with this one because it's really close to my heart and I'm currently really homesick because of the pandemic. I wasn't able to travel home. So I'm really excited to share with you uh, my personal list of pros and cons about Latvia. Let's start with the pros. And on the first place for me is beautiful nature. I've always loved being around nature and thankfully Latvia has plenty of it. Parks, lakes, rivers, a lot of forests and beautiful countryside fields. My favorite place of all time would probably be Sigulda because we used to go on day trips there with my family a lot for hiking, even went kayaking once. That was amazing down the river Gauja. I hope I'll be able to put some pictures or videos around for you to see how beautiful and majestic the nature is there. Number two, historical sites. This will probably be more focused around Riga because, well, it's the capital, that's where it all started. And throughout history, it was actually owned by a lot of different countries. And that definitely left its own mark on the city. From walking through the city, you can discover and experience different centuries, culture, architecture in one go. And I think that is amazing and beautiful because it kind of layered of course, it's not only Riga. For a very long time, the territory of Latvia was under the Livonian order, so we do have quite a bit of old castles scattered around the country, especially closer to the bigger cities. Some of them are restored, some are not. I personally prefer seeing the ones that are like broken down and ancient. Number three would be artistry. I kind of regret not joining any type of subculture or artistic community while I was in Riga, but to be honest, I didn't really have a possibility to do that because I was busy studying. But even though I wasn't in those communities, I could really feel the amazing creative uh, and artistic talent that was concentrated in Riga. And I didn't always realize how many talented people there are. Artists, makeup artists, amazing musicians that I still follow. One of my favorite music bands that are uh, Dana Sakalova and Prata Vetra or Brainstorm. They're actually from Latvia and that makes me very happy because I love their music and uh, they're really great. <laughs> Some people say that creativity actually comes from suffering and honestly that would explain a lot. <sighs> explain a lot. Number four. I think it's number four. <laughs> it's cheap. In comparison, of course. There's probably a lot of other countries in Europe that have even lower prices, but in comparison to, let's say, the Netherlands, where I've also lived, Latvia is pretty cheap. That's why tourists have a great time visiting, because they make money in their country with higher wages, and then they come spend it at our place. Maybe it might not seem extremely cheap for people that live in Latvia and make minimum wage, but in comparison, it's a fairly cheap country. So the next one is witchy stuff, or maybe I should phrase it as older pagan traditions. I actually wanted to do a little bit more research so I could educate myself on this a little bit more. The territory of Latvia was actually the last bit of Europe that was Christianized. So up until approximately the 12th century, people on the, that lived on the territory of Latvia mostly practiced Baltic mythology and paganism. And even with all the Christianization happening in Europe, a lot of people that lived in the countryside were able to maintain their pagan belief systems for quite a few centuries after that. Latvians still celebrate quite a lot of older traditions, like 
Zimasvetki or Christmas, which most of the times isn't actually considered pagan, but a lot of the traditions that you do during this holiday are honestly quite witchy. And people that don't admit it, look it up. Mēs tā kā veidojam arī aizsardzības apli. Tādējādi pasargājoties nākamajā gadā no visa nelabvēlīgā un tās, kas mums, ko mēs negribam uz nākamo gadu līdzi. One of the cool traditions that Latvia celebrates very widely is Ligo, which I would believe in English would be kind of like a summer solstice. That one is definitely very, very pagan, very witchy. Ligo is huge in Latvia and everyone celebrates it each year. One of the very popular traditions is actually making uh, wreaths out of specific herbs, flowers or leaves. And the most popular one is making a wreath out of oak tree leaves because the oak in Latvia represents wisdom and strength. So one of the other things that are probably a little bit more witchy if you really look into the meanings of the elements that are participating is jumping over a campfire as well as skinny dipping in the dark at night. Yeah, no, not sketchy at all. Um, totally cool. <laughs> and I mean, if, if that isn't a little bit witchy to you, I don't know what is. To me personally, it's really cool that still a lot of people in one way or another practice paganism and a little bit of witchcraft these traditions and celebrations, even if we don't fully realize what each little thing mean, it still preserves a lot of symbolism and also connection to nature. And I think that's a huge pro and it's really interesting to look into. Talking about older traditions, the next one is Dziesma Svetki, or as it's known in English, the Dance and Song Festival. Latvia has been holding this festival since 1873, I believe, and it's held every five years. It's a huge festival with approximately 40,000 participants each time. And the festival usually includes photo exhibitions, dancing, singing, a parade. But the emphasis is on a cappella, classical and folk music performances. And it's actually not that easy for choirs to get in. There's a huge selection process. There are a lot of auditions that are held. Sorry, I'm gonna read this because I don't want to mess up the name, but since 2008, Dziesma Svetki is on the list of UNESCO Masterpieces of the Oral and Intangible Heritage of Humanity. It is a massive celebration of folk art and performance in general, so I think it's really cool. Next one is my soft spot, handmade and organic stuff. Latvia actually has a lot of companies that produce very high quality organic and eco-friendly goods. One of the most ancient ones would be Zintars. There is one specific chapstick. I'm gonna put a picture of it right here. Everyone knows how this chapstick smells and it smells like childhood and really cold winter. Zintars is actually one of the oldest cosmetics brand in Latvia. A more modern brand would be Madara. I was really excited to find out that this brand actually uses only natural and eco-friendly products and they really care about the environment. One of my personal favorites is going to be Stenders. I don't know where they stand in the whole eco-friendly thing. I couldn't really find that out in the internet, but at least I know for sure that uh, they always use all natural ingredients in their stuff and they're mostly known for bath bombs and soaps. So they're really cool. If you're in Latvia, check out standards, you might find something that you really like there. Aside from cosmetics, there are also a lot of eco shops that sell fairly affordable products. So if you're not able to physically visit Latvia, I totally recommend you to check out either some of the brands that I mentioned before or just going on Etsy and checking out all the really cool creators that make stuff. But if you can visit a market, I highly recommend you to check it out because there are a lot of handmade and locally sourced stuff that I personally really love. And whenever I do go to those kind of markets, I stock up on like soy and beeswax candles as well as a lot of wildflower honey. That's just my favorite thing. Oh my God, I can talk about that stuff forever, but let's move on. Next one is dairy products. I only started truly realizing how amazing uh, Latvian dairy is when I moved away because I cannot explain the disappointment I had when I moved to the Netherlands and they didn't have the majestic sierri, which are curd snacks in English. 
We also have really good ice cream from companies like Excellence. Yeah, you know, very, very subtle name. And I'm gonna put some of my personal favorites on the screen, so if you ever visit Latvia or you are from Latvia and you haven't tried them, go to the grocery store and get them and just try it you're not gonna regret it. Don't do it if you're lactose intolerant. What am I talking about? Like, all of my lactose intolerant friends eat dairy like there's no tomorrow. I feel like so far you realize that I'm pretty passionate about food and we're gonna move on to baked goods. And again, before I moved away from Latvia, I didn't realize how good our bread is. Like rye bread, the sour, the sweet and sour bread, all of this I really miss still <laughs> living abroad. If you visit Latvia, I highly recommend you to visit a local bakery. It doesn't even have to be anything fancy. One of the like chain bakeries that I really enjoy is Martinia Beteria. I think all of their stuff is delicious, especially if you come in in the morning and it's fresh. Oh my god. <laughs> The previous two cons can be summarized as generally simple but good food. Can't really say that Latvian food is anything crazy, it's quite simple and basic and I believe that a lot of the dishes that are considered traditional are a fusion between different cultures. And if you visit Latvia and you want to try some more like homemade style cooking, something more local and very traditional, I would recommend going to Lido because it's kind of like a chain restaurant, more of a bistro, so you come in, you pick up whatever you want. It's actually one of the favorite places for my husband to go to. <sighs> Needed a break before that. Next part. And now we're gonna move on to the cons and this one is probably gonna be a lot deeper than the next videos that I'm gonna make because, well, I did grow up in Latvia and I really know it from the inside. And again, I wanna note that this is my personal experience, so it is subjective and I don't wanna claim that everyone experiences this and uh, maybe it's just me, who knows. All right, so the first one is occasional nationalism. And I truly believe that Latvia is doing a lot better now. But I will still put this point in here because while growing up, I still experienced people being unnecessarily rude to me or had some judgments about me solely because I was either speaking Russian or just being Russian. It happens and it's okay. That is something that we still need to work on. And the next one is LGBTQ plus rights. We're kind of behind on that because a lot of our SEMA, which is basically the parliament, is quite homophobic and it's really sad. I'm not gonna go into detail, but even in the past half year or so, they were trying to give queer couples more rights, but then it pretty much got canceled because of the vote, which is really sad. The third point is corruption. I won't get into detail, but the majority of people that are in charge of protecting us wouldn't think twice if they were paid to fuck us over. And it's kind of hard to separate it in points because it's all connected at this point, but anyway, the next con is the poor government. And really, if you're creating a small business and really trying to make it all legal and official, you're probably gonna have a really hard time because the government doesn't have money and it's trying to make as much money as possible off the people that are already struggling. One of the next points is some people can get pretty rude. The first time I realized that our customer service is not really good is when I moved to the Netherlands and I realized that the cashiers at grocery stores don't look at me like I killed their whole family. Why are you not looking at me angry? Why are you saying hello and asking me how I'm doing? I'm not blaming people for feeling and being this way because most of the population is really doing their best to try and get from the day to day and I get it. So as a conclusion, I'm not here to paint Latvia in a bad way. I wanted to share my honest personal experience and Trust me, 95% of my experience is amazing and great. Even though the cons might sound a little bit scary, it's not like they are taking over. I couldn't just leave it out and say everything's perfect. After all, I was born and raised in Latvia and I'm constantly homesick. And there is a phrase that describes my feelings pretty well. I love the people, I love my family, my history, the country. I just really 
hate what the government is doing. But at the same time, I know that there are so many passionate and talented young people that are taking over and doing their best to just make things better and I'm really excited to see where that goes and I hope that once the time comes I'll be able to come back and contribute but right now I'll be hopefully contributing positively into telling people about Latvia, telling people where I'm from and sharing my experiences. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know in the comments below whether this was relatable in any way if you are from Latvia or have lived there for long enough and also if you're not from Latvia let me know if this was interesting or helpful in any way and also feel free to ask any questions I'll be happy to answer them. I wish you a good morning, day, evening or night wherever and whenever you're watching this and I'll see you in the next video. Uvidimse v следующем video. Пока! <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Simona and I'm your favorite Russian progress. <laughs> Hi! Gross, that sounds gross. Or mom, or friend, whatever you read. Hi everyone! No. <laughs>